Hey guys, welcome back to Sans Project Bench. On this episode, we are making 4 into 1 collectors for turbo manifolds for this thing. So if you haven't seen the build so far, this is my 1997 Nissan Patrol. And it has an LS1 and we're currently trying to fit a GT45 eBay turbo to it. And we have a bunch of some heavy wall steel a bunch of uh, steam pipe bends and all sorts trying to make some exhaust manifolds for this this setup here so this is the side we're currently working on these are a couple of the exhaust bends that we have and at the moment we're making a collector that's coming out the bottom just here so we had a couple updates to our equipment, so we now have this little bandsaw that makes some nice, clean, accurate cuts. And we have a new tabletop sander. So I haven't found a home for the sander yet, so it's just gonna sit there on top of the upholstery bench. Probably not good for all that stuff under there, but we should be able to clean it off later. So yeah, these are the new additions to the shop. To make these manifolds, these are four and one collectors, we are gonna to have to do some modifications to this here. These are a couple lengths of uh, prepared earlier, but when we cut these, we're gonna to have to cut these on a pretty steep angle like that. And unfortunately, the factory clamp is not gonna work, work for the steel. So I'm in the middle of making up a bracket this is gonna bolt in its place. So that's gonna hopefully mount something like that. I've got to weld a tap on there so I can put it into that hole. And I've got to put a hook on the end of that so that we can slide this, hook it in place, and allow the saw to do its job. Okay, we've had some success setting up this saw here. Uh, it took a lot of trial and error to get this going right. I think we finally have had a win. So this is our first test cut. Now as you can see I've just got a hook that kind of stops stop the, uh, the piece that we're cutting sliding too far forward. And I've got just half an allen key held on with vice grips to stop that going anywhere. So it's a little bit ghetto, but it does the job. Now that we've got our first cut, I can turn that 90 degrees and give it a second cut. So to get this turn 90 degrees and get it pretty close to even, I'm gonna turn this around. Then we can grab a level, or well, maybe not that one, and we can adjust it until the bubble is about center. So you always want to make sure that your starting level is about accurate. You can see that is floating up slightly to the right hand side. So as we do that, we want to mimic as close to, as close as we can. So roughly there. And we can always check on the belt sander to get it even closer after we cut it. So I've got our first corner not 100% even in height. I think my little hook up here sits a little high. So I might just need to add a second one just slightly below. But I think I can still use this. Just gonna take this over here and I can run it on the sander. So we have our four pieces to our merge collector. Now, 
as we set this together, you can see they meet up pretty nicely. But as I didn't use a perfect method to make the second cut, is not perfectly square each one. So I'm gonna to have to probably tack in pairs, then take it back over to the grinder and take it take it flat again. So we're gonna get these tacked up and I'll take it back over there, give it a bit of massaging, get this all together. All right, so I've got the outside welded. I still need to cut off the top and burn all the way inside. Now I made a bit of an error. I tacked around there, but I forgot to tack in under here. So as I did my first couple welds, under here split apart a couple millimeters. So I had to squeeze a bunch of weld in there to get everything to work out. But looking there, you might be able to see the mess I made. That's all right. Should still do the job for what I'm doing. And now I need to get this pipe because it's going to merge into a two and a half inch exhaust pipe. You can run a texture mark around the outside there. I can get that back in the saw and weld up all on the inside. And once that's done, I'll cord put some two and a half inch pipe, but I may wait until I start fitting up in there because I want to weld a V-band to that, so. So I've gone ahead and I've marked around on this collector where this two and a half inch pipe is going to sit. So this is unlikely to be the piece I'm actually going to use, but it's a two and a half section, two and a half inch section. And that gives me my line to cut them. So I'm going to grab my angle grinder and I'm going to cut the end off. And then I can clean up the inside and fully weld that up as well. So I believe we have a completed collector now. So not the prettiest world you'll ever see on the internet, but after hitting it with the die grinder, it's gonna work nicely. So good amount of world on the outside, looked like it penetrated quite well on the inside and it zapped everything together. So there's no holes anywhere. Everything's sealed up nicely, so. That should be okay. Now, probably gonna 
run probably a 90 directly off that. As you can see, the V-band fits very nicely onto the two and a half inch exhaust pipe. I was also considering possibly putting it directly onto the collector like that. But if I do, there is uh, quite a few gaps to fill. So I'm sure it won't be the worst thing in the world to, to fill. So that's going to be it for this episode. So it's a good good way to get the 4 and one collectors done. If you're using uh, that style bandsaw, it's really only just up to the job. Ideally, a uh, bigger one would be nicer. I've seen people do it with uh, use just normal chop friction saws or whatever. But the bandsaw does a much cleaner cut, so definitely recommend getting one of those. Thanks for watching, and see you next time on Sands Project Bench.